cauliflower. Hi, I'm Melissa Clark from NYT Cooking and I'm going to make a vegetarian cauliflower shawarma. What's a shawarma? So shawarma refers to a spit roasted meat. Usually it's lamb, sometimes it's chicken or turkey. And it refers to the turning of the spit in front of the fire, which makes it nice and roasty. But in this version, I'm gonna use cauliflower instead of meat, but I'm gonna take the same flavorings, the same spices that are usually used in a meat shawarma and apply them to vegetables. And then we're gonna do a tahini sauce and we're gonna wrap it in pita bread and we're gonna make this beautiful, lovely vegetarian meal. So I've got a cauliflower, just a medium cauliflower, and I would call this a medium red onion. If you can get a larger red onion, the more red onion, the better. I'm just gonna core this out. You wanna use a paring knife for this. Don't use a big knife. You have more control. So these leaves, have you ever eaten cauliflower leaves? They're really good. If they look nice and they're not all brown, like these are really good looking, I'm just gonna throw them in with the cauliflower. I chose cauliflower because it's very meaty, but mushrooms work really well. Broccoli is also meaty. What else? Eggplant. Oh my gosh. This would be so good with eggplant in the summertime. I'm cutting it into bite-sized florets. This is bigger than bite-sized, right? It's kind of like a big bite, but as it cooks, it shrinks. So when you're cutting vegetables into bite-sized pieces, always think a little bit bigger because they get a little bit smaller in the oven. Don't worry about all of the pieces being the same size. In fact, it's better if they're not all the same size. And it's better if you get like these little crummy bits. You want these because these get super crunchy, like breadcrumb crunchy in the oven. The bigger ones stay a little bit juicier. The smaller ones get a little bit more caramelized. So if you have a lot of different sizes and textures, it's just better. And then you don't have to be anal about cutting it up. Should I say anal? Is that bad? <laughs> I still giggle when you're seeing And then you don't have to be like compulsive about cutting it up. <laughs> Once you've got your vegetables, now I'm gonna make the spice mix that is gonna season them. So I'm gonna start out with olive oil, coriander, paprika, cumin, turmeric is so pretty, cayenne, which looks like a lot, but you want this to have a kick, salt, and black pepper. And then everything gets tossed into this bowl. If you see dry pieces, add a little bit more oil. You really wanna make sure that the pieces are coated because if they're not, the parts that aren't are gonna steam rather than get crisp. It's evenly coated, it's got the spices, it's got the oil. Onto my baking sheet. And then you wanna just smooth it out into one layer. Then I'm gonna roast this at 425. So my oven has been preheated and it's going to take 30 to 40 minutes. And now we can make the tahini sauce. I have my tahini and I'm gonna start off with a lemon. But here's one of my tips for using raw garlic in sauces. I'm gonna put the garlic in the bowl first and then I'm gonna put the lemon juice in the bowl with the salt and I'm gonna let it sit for a minute. The acid in the lemon juice is just gonna mellow the garlic out so that when you bite in, you don't get that like aggressive garlic bite, you get a gentler one. And as you can see, I am microplaning the garlic because I think this is just the easiest way to get a really nice garlic puree. So I'm just gonna start off with like a little bit of salt here and then I will add more to taste. And you want about a tablespoon of lemon juice. So I'm just swirling this together, and just whisk it. And then we're gonna just let that sit for a minute. So another feature of this particular uh, tahini sauce is I'm making it spicy. So this is not traditional, this is my little twist. You can make it spicy with anything you like. Cayenne, you can use your favorite brand of hot sauce. I'm using harissa paste. I'm gonna start out with like half a teaspoon. You never know how hot these different brands of harissa are gonna be. So start out slow and then you can always add more later. Just whisk that in. And now I'm gonna add the tahini. Okay, so you see how the tahini just seized up? It started out thin and supple and it got really stiff. I want to bring it back to that beautiful silky texture. And the way to do that is to add ice water a little bit at a time. Tahini brands also vary a lot. You never know how much water you're gonna have to add. So just keep adding, go slow, and then when it looks silky, it's ready. 
So you can already see it's starting to change. And that, to me, is perfect. I might have to add more salt or lemon juice. Actually, I'm not adding anything. Whoa, this is exactly the heat level I want. It's the salt level I want. It doesn't need any more lemon, so I'm gonna stop here. So cauliflower and onions are done, and let me tell you, they are looking quite beautiful. The turmeric really just makes everything so extra golden brown. And I heated up my pita at the same time as the cauliflower, and now I'm just gonna make a sandwich. Now just roll it up and take a bite. Mmm, it's so good. I don't miss meat. I don't need the meat. It is so good. I'm just gonna have a private moment with my cauliflower shawarma. This is really good, you guys.